Welcome everybody. We're so very glad that you're here. Um, thanks for joining us this afternoon. It feels so much better in here than it does outside. This is a good activity. Um, my name is Crystal Lyon and I'm the new uh, manager of education here at the Augusta History, Augusta Museum of History. And before we get started with our guest speaker, I have a few announcements. Um, so next month in August, we don't have a brown bag lecture. Um, so don't show up here next August waiting for one. But we do have one in September that you're going to want to join us for. Um, Anne Catherine Murray will be here on September 13th for, and she's the executive director of the Augusta Symphony, and she will be speaking on the Symphony Gets a New Home, the Miller Theater. So I am very excited about that. I don't know if y'all came to our great building showdown, but we had one of the paintings that's in the Miller Theater up in Lego <laughs> um, as part of the Great Building Showdown. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, we also have a few things coming up in August that I'd love to tell you about. We have the Night of the Museum fundraiser that's coming up. We're looking for actors for that now. We're selling tickets for that now and we're really excited. This is a great fundraiser for the museum and it's a wonderful night with lots of good yummy eats and drinks and a great time to learn about history in Augusta. Um, we also have the Family Fun Day coming up on August 20th and we're going to have Ray's Creek Revival playing their bluegrass music in the rotunda um, and we're also going to have some great um, examples and craft time with like fiber arts and so if you've ever wanted to make an old rag rug or work with a loom this is your chance to come and learn um yeah that hmm? august what august 20th so that's august. a sunday august 20th and everything in the rotunda is free and here's the good news about august august is our dog days our dollar dog days so it's dollar admission every single day that we're open in august so we'd love for you to come and join us at the Augusta museum of history um, to introduce our special guest um, he is our seventh guest speaker in our brown bag history lectures on 21st century turning points um, we have the Honorable Lark Jones from North Augusta joining us today, and I'm super excited as a North Augustian <laughs> to get to introduce him. He has served the city of North Augusta as um, a city councilman for 11 years and as the mayor from 1997 to 2017, making him the longest serving elected mayor in the city's history. So let's give a big round of applause for Lark. I told her to keep it as short as sweet as she could, and she did good. Uh, little did I know when I became mayor, or when I quit being mayor, and I told Nancy, don't call me ex-mayor, call me former mayor, because ex-mayor sounds like you've been indicted and convicted. Uh, little did I know that the mayor who would take my place would be older than me. But who knows? Uh, pleasure to be with you this afternoon. I'm going to talk about kind of the, the important stuff as far as growth is concerned in North Augusta, kind of during the end of my terms as mayor, the big things that you see right across the river, the big changes you've seen in the last 10 years or so. Uh, give you a little background about North Augusta. Some of you are, are North Augustans, you know it, but you're getting ready to hear it again. But in the 1860s, Augustine James U. Jackson was a young boy, and supposedly he was standing on Broad Street with his father, and he looked across the river up at those hills and says, why doesn't somebody build a town over there, Dad? And that sort of became his life's work. He formed the North Augusta Land Company, and in 1892, the North Augusta Land Company had offices on Broad Street in Augusta, and on Broad Street in New York City. Uh, the highlight of the early days in North Augusta was the Hampton Terrace Hotel, which you're probably familiar with. It was up on the top of the hill, sorta of in front of where Fairview Presbyterian Church is, on that big hill there, most of which that was actually brought in by wagons. It was along the lines of the Bon Air, the Wilcox and the Aiken, but it was considered to be one of the biggest all wooden structures in the world at the time. Had telephones, had places for rail cars. It was really ahead of its time. 
only lasted 13 years and burned to the ground on New Year's Eve in 1916. <coughs> so North Augusta just sort of trudged along for about 50 years, and then they built this place over here called the Savannah River Plant. Mm -hmm. uh, from the looks of some of you, you will recognize, you'll recognize the term the bomb plant. Mm -hmm. That's what it was called. Uh, and in 1960, North Augusta had a population of about 3,000 people. <coughs> Excuse me, 1950, North Augusta had a population of about 3,000 people. In 1960, they were at 12,000 people. So they quadrupled in the space of 10 years. And North Augusta was content for years to let the Savannah River site, Fort Gordon slash Eisenhower, uh, Kimberly Clark, Graniteville, Procter & Gamble, and all these large corporations and manufacturers we have here drive our economy. But then the textile plants closed. And the mission of SRS changed, and we weren't making as many bombs anymore, thank goodness. Uh, and North Augusta decided we needed to get proactive uh, in economic development. Uh, so almost 100 years after James U. Jackson said, why doesn't somebody build a town up there? We were up there looking down at the river and saying, why don't we do something down there on the river? <laughs> the bridges to North Augusta, unbeknownst to many Augustans, were actually two-way. Uh, <laughs> we would go over and we'd come back. Uh, they didn't have much reason to come back. And in order to, to get somebody to come back, you got to have a reason. And when people come into your community and they spend money and then go home, Government doesn't have to do too much for them. They are a real economic boom and boom and driver. That's what we've been doing over here on Broad Street for years. Uh, but as downtown Augusta, Broad Street changed from you know the look of my hair. I can remember when there was Whites and Davidsons and Cullums and all. And this was the retail center of Augusta right here on Broad Street. That's changed now. We built malls, some good, some bad. Population shifted out that way, further away from Augusta and North Augusta. So we said we can be our own market. Well, how do we do that? How do we become our own market? How do we get these things in North Augusta? Well, number one, they have a little golf tournament here in the spring. <laughs> and when I became mayor, I got in touch with the Augusta National and I said, hey, you guys have the red carpet tour, if you remember that. I don't know if they still have it or not, but you have the red carpet tour. We'd like to have some access to some tickets for North Augusta. Well, the Augusta National being the fine organization that they are, they sold the city of North Augusta four tickets. <laughs> I've never used those tickets. I fortunately was on a waiting list for 18 years and got two tickets of my own. But let me tell you, when you're trying to recruit somebody to come into your town to build a restaurant or do, build a hotel, a motel, or do something, if you hold enough master's tickets, that'll work. <laughs> Give me an example. I was a big and always have been and probably always will be a big Chick-fil-A fan. <laughs> we started at the very simplest one-on-one -on -one level contacting restaurants and places. And the, the number one thing when you talk to people like that, they say, why are you doing this? What's wrong with your town? I said, nothing's wrong with my town. He said, well, we've checked and you, you, your income level is 25% above the average of South Carolinians, but you don't have anything. And we said, that's why we're calling you. <laughs> I said, they're all over here in Augusta and they're afraid they'll hurt their Augusta store or they just don't want to come. Well, first thing I did was, there was only one Chick-fil-A in Augusta at this time and it was on Washington Road. I got in touch with Dan Kathy, Truett Kathy's son. Said, I got some master's tickets. <laughs> Come down here and you got to spend about two hours with me and then I'm going to hand you the tickets. 
and you can go to the tournament. You're not going to have to walk around with me in the tournament. The only requirement is when the day is over, you've got to bring the tickets back to the public safety department because we're going to give them to somebody else the next day. Fantastic guy. We rode all around North Augusta. I said, we all do one here. We all do do Chick-fil-A there. And he said, well, he said, Lark, he said, I think we could be successful with a store here, but we're still building stores in Columbia and Charlotte and outside of Atlanta. A couple years later, and he was very truthful with me, a couple years later, uh, they built another Walmart in North Augusta. You know, you, you hit the map when you have two Walmarts and multiple McDonald's. <laughs> when, once you get there, you're, you're thriving. I mean, you, you, you made it. And they came to me and said, you probably heard the term Weldon White. He was behind it. He said, what do you need? He came, came and met with me. What does North Augusta need? And I said, well, we could use a furniture store, appliance store, uh, uh, you know, Chick-fil-A. <laughs> they got in touch with Chick-fil-A, and we'd gotten on their radar. And when they go build this center here with all this stuff, then it happened. So a lot of times we got the door slammed in our face, and it didn't happen. Uh, one of the other things that we did, if you've been through downtown North Augusta, if you remember 20 years ago, we had mobile homes in downtown North Augusta. Uh, about 50 feet off of Georgia Avenue, there was a little mobile home park. And we kind of came to the, 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 the decision that if we're going to consider ourselves a, a growing city, a thriving city, a city where people wanted to be, no offense, I lived in a mobile home for four years when I was in college. But no offense, you don't have mobile homes in the middle of your downtown. <laughs> So we decided they were grandfathered in under uh, zoning clauses and all that sort of stuff. So we amended the zoning law to say if you are non-conforming, you have five years to remove your mobile home. Well, <clears throat> the lady that owned the park, she got all mad about it. She waited till the fifth year of the last month to remove her mobile homes. Shortly after that, where the Jackson Square development is, if you've ever been to Antonio's Pizza, that nice building with shops in the front and goes down University Avenue, they bought that and redeveloped it. Not long after that, <clears throat> I handled the closing of the mobile home park. I'm a dirt lawyer, real estate lawyer. And she came over from Aiken, she lived in Aiken, and she said, I owe you an apology. I said, you do? She said, yes. She said, I got all mad at you when you said I had to move my mobile home. I was getting $300 a month rental from my spaces on my mobile homes. I am selling my lot now for the development of the offices for $300,000. If I had known I could do that, I would have moved my mobile homes out the first month you said I needed to <laughs> instead of the last. And that was one of those rare times when government action created wealth and opportunity for someone. You hear so much about condemnation and all that sort of stuff. Well, we recognized we had all this riverfront property and you know, it wasn't a diamond in the rough, it was the mother load. Why had not, why, why hadn't anything happened all these years? Primarily because of something called the floodplain. And you've heard the term 100 year floodplain. Well, North Augusta was still under the 100 year floodplain without even any recognition of what Clark Hill had done on changing and protecting flooding. Augustine and former governor Carl Sanders owned a lot of land on our side of the river and he knew how to get things done and got the floodplain lowered by 10 feet, which meant that all this on North Augusta could then be developed. Uh, the first thing that really got development going over on our side of the river was the River Golf Club. Uh, that's been about 25 years ago now, believe it or not. And that 
let the world know that you could live in Augusta, you could drive to North Augusta, you could play golf, and you could drive home. And it worked. Uh, I, had, I had a daughter who was in college in Charleston, and I, the only magazine I take is Southern Living. I still get it. But there was a thing in Southern Living about this place in Charleston on Mount Pleasant called Ion. I don't know if you've ever been there or seen it. It's a one of these new traditional neighborhood developments, close in, really nice. It was the forerunner to Hammond's Ferry. I saw that when it was three houses there, it was getting started, and I said, this, we need to do this on the river in North Augusta. Got in touch with the developers. They came up, looked at it. Again, those master's tickets will get anybody to drive up here for a day. <laughs> and it was a little beyond their scope because they were tied to their property. So they got these, these folks named from out of New York, from Tuxedo, New York, Leland Development. And they sort of partnered and got the thing going. And we went through about three years of planning, of negotiations, of figuring out how, you know, you've heard the term public-private partnership. And that's exactly what that was. Now, the main thing that we, that was the driver in all of this, as far as I was concerned, you know, North Augusta was a, we weren't a small city. We, we're now over 25,000. Back then, we were probably 20. We were growing, we were thriving, but we had been nuts and bolts government. We'd been police department, fire department, water department, and as all of you probably know, great recreation department and facilities. We'd done the Greenway, which is a very unique feature in North Augusta. Uh, and we were, you know, we were doing things right, but we didn't want to create North Augusta and rich riverfront North Augusta. That wasn't who we were as a community. North Augusta has always been middle, upper middle class. Not a lot of super rich, not a lot of uh, desperate poor, thank goodness. So those were in the back of my mind and in our minds. And the thing that we wanted to do is make sure whatever we do, you're not going to get your tax bill and say, well, last year my taxes were $500, and this year they're $700. I bet that $200 is all that river stuff going up. Because you, obviously you have some people that are against those things. So we said we, we're not going to strap that on the cost on the backs of the taxpayers. We were able to get some roads built. We, we did something we'd never done before. We got, you've heard it, it's kind of an ugly term, federal earmarks. Kind of done away with those things. Pet projects, pork barrel, those kind of things. Well, the guys from Tuxedo, New York, knew how to play that game. And I met with a congressman in the Marriott one day who was from Oklahoma, who was the chairman of some committee in Congress, and they were lobbying him and wine and dining him to get us some money for our project. Four million dollars. Big deal. Probably the largest funding that we had. And it was under the guise of the Brick Pond Park, environmental, uh, those type things that, that were, well, since we got the money, they were 100% legitimate. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another thing. We had all that, we had all these environmental issues and the Brick Pond Park, uh, I mean, it's, if you haven't been over there, it's just unique. It's, it's sort of like North Augusta Central Park to New York City. Really neat. It's a passive thing. Uh, be careful if you've got children or uh, dogs or whatever, keep them under leash because there are alligators in those ponds and there are big ones. Uh, I am just thrilled that we've got a municipal center here, a baseball park and a hotel here and there are alligators living in there. <laughs> you know, it's proof that, that development and protection of the environment can coexist if you just look at it that way. So uh, we were doing fine as far as the citizens are concerned, 
until we decided to go uh, with Project Jackson, named after James U. Jackson, our founder. What was Project Jackson? It was hotel, restaurants, ballpark, uh, apartments, all sorts of things, multi-use, that's the big thing now. It kind of started, go back to Carl Sanders, it kind of started, uh, I hope he doesn't mind me using his name, with a guy named Martin Becker, who worked for Carl Sanders and was kind of his right hand front man and all. And he calls me up one day, he says, would you be, this is after the Green Jackets were trying to move over here to the golfing gardens and Augusta was floundering on getting it done. Mm -hmm. And he comes to me, he said, would you be interested in entertaining the Green Jackets coming to North Augusta? My first response was, yes, but I am not going to stab my friend Deke Copenhaver in the back. I'm not going to start negotiating with you. And all of a sudden now, the Green Jackets are coming to North Augusta. And everybody in Augusta goes, well, how did that happen? I said, because North Augusta always has been, and as far as I'm concerned, always will be a neighbor mm -hmm. and a good neighbor to the city of Augusta. Mm -hmm. We want this to thrive. We don't want it to become some blighted area that's a threat to our city we want it to be just successful and he said i understand i said well when you 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 go talk to deke and let see how that works out and if he's if he and deke reached the point he said it, it's it's not it's just not going to happen over here so have at it well they had some land that they wanted to to build uh the stadium on up where the, all these new car dealerships are which would have been a great spot for a stadium uh, and it would have looked down over Augusta, good access, easy parking. But here's the rub. We go back to that. It's got to pay for itself. And in order for it to pay for itself, we use something called tax increment financing. I won't bore you with all those details. But it's basically a system where the schools, the county, and the city take the taxes that that property generates and they don't use it for the schools, the county or the city. They use it to pay for the ballpark and the other public amenities for a defined period of time. And then at the end of the time, whew, we got all this good stuff there that then generates and throws off a lot of revenue to those entities. You give up a little to get a lot later on. The only way a school system would do that is if you're doing something that doesn't create a lot of school children. You can't do it on a subdivision that's going to bring in 500 families and, and 500 school children. They got to build a new school and don't get the money to do it. You just, and rightfully so. But that's what we generated uh, in order to pay for these things. That area didn't work for hotels, apartments restaurants and things like that so the ball club we've been talking with the ball club and they said they came to me and said do you uh do you, you you're in this all this riverfront stuff we, what about building a ballpark on the river and i said oh wait a minute i'm not gonna stab martin becker in the back he brought you to me you will need to go to him and say, thanks, you got a decent location, but the way this thing's got to work, it's not going to work for us. And he did that and was very understanding, and, and, and he saw through all the negotiations where that was headed. So then we moved to the river. That was really uh, the beginning of, 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 of a lot of gnashing of teeth, as you might say, <laughs> and testing of patience. I had pretty much decided in 2013 I was not going to run again. I'd been mayor for 16. I'd already met the qualifications of longest serving mayor. Not that that was really anything on my radar screen. But we were really getting into all this, and I said, I just don't think 
I mean, you cannot imagine the time and the meetings and the things that, that elected officials go through that sometimes you never see anything come out of it. Because sometimes nothing does ever come out of it. But if you don't do it, you know, uh, if you don't swing the bat, you'll never get a hit, so to speak. Uh, so you do it. Well, we started moving down the road, the stadium and all that, and oh, the, the opposition started. And the sad thing about it is, the largest opposition was from the river clubs, a few river club residents, and a few Hammonds Ferry residents. It was kind of odd. Some people in Hammonds Ferry embraced it, and a few were against it. But the ones in the River Club, the, the lead two guys that fought into the River Club and filed all the lawsuits, the sad thing to me was their house was there because they benefited from the same things we were using and doing to do something on the other side of the bridge. It was, I got mine, but you can't have yours type thing, the old NIMBY. Uh, but still, they, they sued us. They took us to the Supreme Court. We fast-tracked at the Supreme Court. It took about 18 months. And guess what happened during those 18 months? The cost of the stadium went up by $8 million. And the whole time we were running these numbers, and these things were being financed by seat taxes on tickets, rentals from the Green Jackets to use the stadium, sales tax, accommodations tax, property taxes, parking taxes, we had all kinds of things that we'd never done before in North Augusta. And the goal was to, we wanted to project our revenues conservatively so that our revenues would be 120% needed versus the 100% we would need to pay all of our obligations and bonds and things of that nature. Well, as the cost went up, of course, that number went down and Fortunately for us, the interest rates were still low when we launched all the bonds and everything. And we were down to probably about 110, 112% coverage of our 100% projected debt. Uh, we had some city council people that were, uh, we had a couple that voted against things. And it wasn't so much about what we were doing, it was that they were just nervous financially over the kind of money we were talking about. it. And I understood that. If you're you know, the one vote I had in my 30-something years on council that I probably regret was when we first built the park, uh, the, the gyms over that Riverview Park. And we projected the gyms and everything initially to count cost four to five million dollars, and we had the money, we'd saved it up, worked it up, do it. Well, they came in at seven million dollars. And I was a young councilman at that time, and uh, I said, I'm all for this, but I, man, this scares me to death. And, uh, I voted against it. it. Fortunately, it passed. <laughs> you ever heard an elected official say I made a mistake and I'm wrong? Uh, I guess I can say that now since I'm not in office and not running for anything. <laughs> but, you know, that was the one thing that I probably uh, regretted, that I could have been a little more foresighted or that type thing. It worked out. But that was one of the reasons why I was in board, on board with doing it. I saw it had to work. Sometimes you gotta step, take a leap of faith and step out a little bit. Uh, people ask me, said, were you that big on the ballpark? I said, no, I wasn't that big on the ballpark, but the ballpark is what brought the hotel and restaurants and things of that nature. I was, you know, I want, yes, my, Goal as mayor was to get Chick-fil-A in North Augusta. <laughs> Check that off. We also needed a nice hotel in North Augusta. Uh, no offense to you folks here in Augusta, but it's embarrassing to be a town of 20 something thousand people and having to book guests in places, not even in your town. And we, you know, we would support it. And, and so bringing the hotel, bringing restaurants and things like that that we didn't have, you know, was, was the cat, that was the catalyst for getting that stuff done. Uh, okay, we finally broke ground in 2017, and that was the time that I was leaving office. And, you know, for the most part, it has been very successful. We didn't think there would be a pandemic that would cancel a full baseball season. Uh, 
but we've been able to survive those things. Our safety gu safeguards are good. You're moving over there. Is that my warning? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll close up. But uh, the the for the most part, it has worked well. I don't know if you've been over. They got a place over there I hadn't been to yet, but everybody says it's great. Take your wallet with you. Brinkley Steakhouse. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I haven't been yet. I've made a mistake telling my wife I would take her there for our 51st anniversary next month. So I'm, I'm on board. Uh, but I've heard great things about it. Uh, and what has happened, in a sense, is that North Augusta has become its own market. Even if you've seen little Freddy's over here, the new hamburger joint. People went crazy. You couldn't get in that place for the first month. It's toned down there. It's a hamburger joint. You couldn't get down Martin Town right Yeah, now. yes. And, you know, <laughs> Wendy's wanted to sue because the traffic to get into Freddy's backed up Wendy's. Oh, like, backed up but the they came to North Augusta. They didn't go to Evans or Martinez or Augusta. They came to North Augusta. So that kind of shows us that we are our own market. All right, I'll close with this. The problem now is... is is, is with anything else. It's one of balance. And the things that make you great and attractive that where people want to be cause you the most problems. Well, I want to go to North Augusta because they don't have as much traffic as Evans does. Blah, 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 blah. Well, they come and what do they do? They bring three cars with them and it increases the traffic. So the more you do things right, the harder it is to continue. From a government standpoint, maintaining the status quo is very difficult to do. Not everyone's going to be satisfied. I've had people come up to me in Lowe's. We got Lowe's in North Augusta years ago. They come to me and says, North Augusta's going too fast. You've lived here all your life. I can't believe all this stuff you're letting happen. I say, do you want to drive out the Bobby Jones Expressway to get this stuff that you're getting from Lowe's today? And then they kind of shrugged their shoulders and walk <laughs> off. Uh, I apologize for not providing you some of the latest stuff on North Augusta. When I retired, I'm like General MacArthur. I'm just trying to fade away, I'm not sticking my, my nose in places where it doesn't belong. Uh, I hope I haven't bored you too much. And Nancy said I can take some questions now, if you have any. Yes, ma'am. This is not a question, but just an observation. When I'm in, I live in North Augusta. When I drive by that hilltop, beautiful, was it Buffalo property? Right. Why are we using our most beautiful pieces for government that run the fire station? I mean, the police station. Well, they should have put the fire station there with the police yes, station. They've yes, wasted yes. their money building. That's another thing that happened after I left that I regret. <laughs> um, that, they, they wasted about $500,000 going around the corner. What's the difference? Yeah. They tried to appease some folks. We're talking about history here on those old buildings that were up there that were just gone and couldn't be saved. And uh, I think I, I, I'll ask you to hold your thought on that until you see the building finished. I think it's going to be something. I haven't seen it, but I know it's going to be something that we're going to be proud of along the lines of the uh, municipal building. It seems like that would have been the Grand Hotel at Vernon. Yeah, well, once you build a ballpark and you put that river, people want to be on the river. That's where they want those things. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Do you know what the plans are for the 13th Street Bridge? I mm. understand that. They're going to make it wider so it's easier for pedestrians. I, I don't know that they're going to make it more lanes. They are going to have, and, I, and I've just know this as a citizen, not as any kind of oh. official, but they are going to make it a little more pedestrian bike friendly. Yeah, very, they yeah. talked about putting things on both sides, and I said in the comment, don't put sidewalks on both sides. Put the sidewalk on the side where it is now and make it bigger. Right. Just have one big sidewalk and two small sidewalks. Right. Whether they paid attention to me, it's highly doubtful. But it's going to have lights and be nice and all that. Uh, I hope I live to see it. It's supposed, oh, that's, that's it's supposed to start maybe 24, 25. Oh, not so bad. I think they will probably wait to start on that when they get I-20 yeah. finished, because I-20 oh, is a nightmare right now. It's, it's not, looking it's at the next really century. Yeah. <laughs> it's like several years yeah. ago. What about the crossover from the um, 
a river walk, you know, it's very dangerous to cross there. Do they have any plans to like make it? Well, they go have the thing that you walk up and go over up. I don't recall. Yeah. They should. You're right. They okay. should. It's just so difficult yeah. to make that cross. Yeah. You know. Years ago, I heard a rumor that, and I live in North Augusta also, that they had talked about water taxis. They had talked about that so <laughs> but I, That's all it's got. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think it makes a lot of sense for people at the ball games that are drinking. <laughs> that kind of right. Stuff. Well, I mean, when those discussions happened before Uber and Lyft and all that kind of stuff, and I, you know, if they had enough downtown vibe to warrant that, they certainly, you know, if there's money to be made doing something, somebody's going to do it. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a neat idea. I love the one yeah. on the Potomac River. You know, I go up there a lot. Yeah. Right. I think she has a question for us. Okay. I'm here. I know this is currently happening, but I want to know your viewpoint on the new is it Cypher Schultz? Yeah, that's all I was going to ask, too. You, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was well, I could give you the political answer and say that is not in the city limits of North Augusta, and it's in Edgefield County, and that's out of my jurisdiction. Oh. Uh, if it's, I'll well, put what, it this what way. The, what if is it your is, question what about? If it, it's a huh? new development on North Augusta. Yeah, it's up in Edgefield County. Right off of Tom Edgefield. Watson is supposedly going to design a golf course, and they're going to build a really nice, huge development with lot prices in the hundreds of thousands and hunting preserves and all that. If, you, if you're an internet person, if you go to Cypress Shoals, they got a real big, uh, not real big, but a nice little website that looks real good. Uh, it's quasi off the record. You're writing that like you're a reporter. No, I'm an interior designer. So for me, I was okay. Please, <laughs> I off the record because I don't, I don't know that this is reliable. But my word on the street is they haven't closed on any of the lot land purchases yet. Where exactly and is it going to be? If you go up Marktown Road, it'd be uh, be on the left of uh, a, a good ways past I-20, not a good ways. Like five miles yeah. and and then. All that land and they're talking about 1,300 acres. Or yeah, it's going to be pretty big. And they have offered, I don't think it's a secret, they have offered folks four to five times fair market value for their yeah. properties. And when it, when it first happened, I thought it was the Saudis were involved in this, yeah. but I've been told it's not. Uh, but uh, are they going to four lane mark down road I, right there? That's, any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> What's the story? Are you of, Bill Brummer? Yeah. Yeah, I thought you were. I told him, I said, I think I know you. Yeah. What's the story on the Augusta Country Club? You mean the North Augusta? The North Augusta Country Club. The problem. city The city has actually bought that. A number of years ago, while I was still mayor, we bought some property further out because North Augusta Country Club was still uh, in business. When it went under, Donnie Thompson uh, bought it, and then we traded our land a little further out with Donnie, and the city of North Augusta now owns that. The idea is to build another regional park, like Riverview Park, on that land. The problem with that, from my standpoint, uh, is the, the real conundrum for a uh, elected official is how do we do that do we make this new park out here on this side of town uh, identical to Riverview Park and replicate it or do we make Riverview Park basketball and baseball and make this new park tennis soccer football mm -hmm. the problem with that is if you make them two separate if you make them brother and sister all your citizens have to go back and forth. One kid's playing this and one kid's playing that. I'm in favor of that. And he said, I said, because if you make them identical, then you're gonna have North North Augusta yeah. and South North Augusta. And the thing that's always been the greatness of our community is we've been one. The interstate is a huge divider. We tried very hard to make those folks that live on the other side of the interstate which I knew you used to if you still, and we want you to be part of the city of North Augusta. And 
You may have to drive back and forth, but at least you're going to be in one community. One high school in North Augusta is a very unifying thing. Um, I just want to say that. I'm sorry, you can only ask one question. I just want to say that North Augusta is just a wonderful community, and you, you know, your attitude toward development is just terrific. And Augusta just falls down flat on its face so many times in comparison. And so you're to be lauded for what you have done. Well, Thank you, and I, you know, people say, used to ask me all the time, they say, did you, did you enjoy what you were doing? And I said, it was kind of like being an air traffic controller at Atlanta, Jackson, <laughs> Hartsfield, whatever the name of the airport is. I said, you couldn't, you couldn't get too excited when one project landed safely and worked because you had other planes and other projects up there that you were still <laughs> working on. But now, uh, a few months ago, I was with my daughter. She's, uh, she's lived in Boston. She now lives in Greenville, very progressive southern city, if you're familiar with how things Greenville has done. And we're down around the ballpark doing something. I got my only grandchild with us. And she's walking around and she said, this is pretty good, Dad. This is pretty good. And I mean, to me, that was like the President of the United States calling me and congratulating, uh -huh. you know. If you get your children to buy into something you've done and not want to walk away from it because they're ashamed you're their father or whatever, <laughs> uh, that was pretty high praise. Let's give him a very warm